because I want to get some more fencing done and don't want to destroy the very devoted and energetic atmosphere now. I'm going to keep that as short as possible. This is not going to be anything particularly new. It's just, got, it's, it just uh, is going to provide you with a different perspective of what, of what you are doing anyway. And it is about the so-called snake motion. The snake motion is something that uh, does not occur in any of the fencing treatises as, uh, um, as a name. It's something that was introduced to me in traditional martial arts. And it's basically a motion where you do a spiraling um, motion with your hand and your arm like so. And it could be extremely <coughs> limited so that it looks as if it's only the, coming from the wrist, which it doesn't. Whenever you do any snake motion, you want to engage these muscles just as well as uh, the upper back muscles. So it's not this, it's always coming from the whole body, so you can probably see my uh, so tensing up as I do. And it also comes as a wider motion, so going out, dropping down, coming back in and up again. And a lot of the applications we do see in the manuscripts too. Like for instance, Cornelius, if I may borrow you for a moment. For instance, the disarm from Fiddlebow. So uh, he is entering, I'm going to Fiddlebow, setting up a trap. Now, if this blade is static, I grab it with my shield hand, twist it out of his wrist, and strike. Now, what I have been doing here with my hand is basically a slave motion. This motion again. In Talhofer, very often, both in Sword and Butler as well as in Messer fighting, you see a much wider snake motion happening. So, in Talhofer, he prefers to enter very deeply, and then you would step in here to uh, use the snake motion to do a wrestling technique. Okay? So, here, this is a big snake motion. I see that one. Right? as opposed to the disarm, which is a small one. Now this snake, if you use that as an image in your fencing, occurs over and over again. And it's a great way to introduce people to the concept of being very sensitive in binding. So if it's blade versus blade, then uh, you found out this weekend that positioning is more important than pressing aside. The one who presses can only press. When I'm pressing, I'm absorbed with this particular action. I'm numbing myself because I'm using strength, and which will give a great signal and a clear signal to the one who is very susceptible, lithe and uh, agile and responds to a pressure signal much more easily. Now the serpent, the snake, has been an analogy for the sword for many, many centuries. There are all sorts of images and, um, and uh, even words and adjectives that contain some relation to snakes and serpents that appear in conjunction with the sword. Uh, you even have uh, swords um, marked on the fullest of blades in many manuscripts and um, the way that the pattern welding on Viking or migration period swords is described in say Beowulf is often times by means of terms like uh, Wilmfa, which means warm colored so the worm of course is the dragon, the, the serpent um, but there are, if we think about the snake motion we could think not only of the sword as being colored uh, by like a snake or in, in uh, Dietrich's, uh, Fidrich's saga there even is a sword ritual when the sword is drawn to be used for battle 
you have to hold it in a particular way so that a snake can crawl down from underneath the hilt and down the blade. And only if you do that ritual, the sword will help you, or otherwise it will be turned, uh, will turn its power against you. So um, the sword itself can be either inhabited by a snake or it could be a snake. And if you think of this as the head of a snake and the sword moving like a snake, namely with the snake motion that I was doing with my arm earlier on. So if, I, if uh, this is a blade and here we have another blade, then all my motions that I do as you can keep on your binding play. So as, as if we are fencing. So it's the snake that tells me what I'm going to do, what I'm supposed to do. And the snake doesn't move like, <laughs> like this. It start, always starts to move with the head first. Tongue comes out, smelling the way. And sneaking, sneaking, it finds its way. And so the head of the snake, that's the point of your sword. So instead of uh, to, instead of using a snake that has a stiff neck, you want a really sneaky and agile and mobile snake. Yeah? So what uh, some of you have been doing, and myself, I'm guilty of that too, in fencing, if you have a stiff necked snake, then you will probably do something like this. But the one who has an agile snake is going to kill you. All right, so think of. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is even how I uh, train particular binds, like for instance the, uh, the right overbind. When we were working on the correct mechanics for the right overbind from 133, one way uh, that I used to explain my mechanics is assuming that this is a blade. He comes at me, I absorb the energy, now my snake takes over. Here, I come back in. Yeah. So, again, I keep touch with the bind. So it's not like <coughs> pressing. No. Here, I'm sneaking over very gently. And now, of course, the art and the trick is to apply that to the sword. So instead of, like I used to do in earlier years, just pressing with a stiff headed snake, now what I do is much more agile, much more fluid. Okay, and so all your fencing, this is actually a nice exercise if you just put aside your buckler, buckler, the other buckler, um, you can use this as an exercise for uh, learning to work with blade bites, just try to be on top, so the job is being on top, but you get on top by going there like a snake, once you're on top you give the opponent a chance to find out how he can get on top without pushing, so he should not Press aside. So if you just press aside, then you'll just sneak in again. So in order for him to avoid that I just kill him as he presses, he his snake crawls over mine. Yes. And now I have to do something about it. means that your point is always very close to the target. And while the, while the head of the snake is not pointing to its target all the time, it's making its way to the target as it uh, crawls in waves towards its target. Okay? So this is just a way of looking at your fencing um, using this concept uh, of the sword as a snake. Other applications are with the shield. The shield is a weapon too, so um, it's... Do you know what? 